Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. What I'm trying to do is switch to a different substrate for uh, a number of cages. Um, you know, snakes that uh, uh, that seem to go to the bathroom often and and need a lot moist, more moisture, moister climates and stuff. Unlike Mr. Naja here, um, you know, these guys just mess up their cages left and right especially these smaller ones, uh, uh, need a, a different kind of substrate uh, uh, because this uh, hardwood bark mulch that I use, and you can see the Gaboon Viper, it's perfect for because uh, she doesn't make it all wet and poopy and everything else on a regular basis. Um, these guys just make it poopy. Um, you know, some snakes it works for, others it doesn't. It really doesn't work well in the bin and actually, uh, Lori convinced me to try uh, with the baby gaboons and rhinos. Why don't we just put a, a sheet, couple sheets of paper towel in there? And she was correct. It, it's easier and faster to clean. Um, the snakes seem to be okay with it. Although uh, we'll I'll, we'll do a shot here in a moment of the gaboons that are over on this side. Uh, the reason why they're on this side is because I didn't have room on that side, so uh, no, you know, there's not a particular reason why they're here. Um, but these guys are a little bit drier, the gaboons, and uh, they don't make such a mess in their cage and, and attract flies as readily as the guys on the other side for whatever reason. So we're using, I'm trying at the, her recommendation and also I got a, a good endorsement from my friend, a uh, longtime friend, Mitch at Diamond Reptiles, uh, who I look up to, I've gotten a lot of animals from. Uh, he definitely knows what he's doing. He's the first one to really breed uh, uh, leucistic monocle culvers and sunset monocles here in the U.S. He, he knows what he's doing. Uh, he, said, he gave this, you know, a very good, uh, 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 you know, rating and review f directly to me. Um, so I, you know, uh, I'm going to give it a try. It's pro it's cheaper than some of the other substrates that are out there that are specifically made for reptiles. Uh, you know, Reptile Bark and Zoomed have just gone out of their minds. Um, you know, charging, you know, $23, $25 for a bag of bark, basically. And you know, Mitch told me that, you know, you really sort of want to stay away from the cypress mulch because sometimes they treat that with a fungicide and don't let you know. Uh, this is just, uh, you know, wood pulp, uh, you know, old recycled papers that are sort of crumpled up and it's got uh, baking soda in it to stop odor. And, uh, okay, I mean, the base baking soda, this will keep it a little drier, so you have to make sure that your snake stays hydrated via either a water dish uh, or since it's paper you can just wet it down and it'll just uh, hold water and slowly evaporate and everybody will be happy and you know the baking soda uh, once it dries out will still be baking soda uh, no big deal now the customer that we have in here is uh, called uh, the uh, Mamushi um, it inhabits uh, uh, very, very eastern Russia, western China. It, the genus is Gloides, uh, after the famous herpetologist. Uh, uh, they used to be part of a, the Echistrodon complex, but uh, uh, DNA showed that there was enough uh, difference in the DNA that they should be awarded their own genus, not, not a subspecies, their own genus. And I've had this guy since... Um, Oh God, as long as I've had the popcorn culvers, I think 2009 or 8 or something. And, uh, you know, I brought a, a few of them back from the ham show, and uh, this is the only survivor. And the only reason why he survived is because uh, I spent 
the first two years of his life force feeding him and I'd get him feeding and I'd move him into this size uh, a cage that the grumpus is in and he would go off feed and start starving himself because it was too big and scary for him. So as soon as I put him back in the bin, he would start feeding again. So this is for all the idiots out there that think that snakes need these gigantic huge spaces to be happy. They really don't. They like smaller quarters, um, you know, with the exception of a few snakes. And uh, uh, so he's happy. He eats on his own. Uh, I'd love to be able to display him, but, you know, he's, he has a very, very nasty temper, he's a pit viper, uh, and I don't have specific anti-venom for him, so we don't mess with him very much. So, we cleaned his cage, and now we're going to have fun getting him back into his cage without him going spazzo. Which he's already doing. Yes, he's already there. Hello. I know I see you. Come on. Come on. You're okay. Beautiful snake. You can definitely tell he's a male by uh, the size of his tail after his anal scoot wear. Uh, are you soaking your hemi penis there, dude? That's rude on camera, <laughs> I'll tell ya. I mean, put that boner away before you hurt somebody. Okay, so soaking your penis in the water uh, is apparently things that bloities like to do. So while his head is in there, uh, we're just gonna put him in his hemi penis. Ooh, he'd sperm or something. Yeah, you know, he he came in our swimming pool down there. Oh my goodness! Oh, you dirty dog, you. Ah, uh, gross. Okay, so that's the gloides, and that's what uh, Mrs. Viper Keeper and I are up to on this Saturday afternoon. Come on, Miss Crate. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Miss Crate. I know, the lights are very bright. Miss Crate's going to get her substrate changed. Hi, Miss Crate. Hello. Bungarus candidus, uh, the Malayan crate, also sometimes known as the blue crate, uh, in some areas of uh, Malaysia and southern Thailand. Um, uh, the, oh, you're hungry, huh? Yes, I know. Well, I'll be feeding you. Um, the most operative uh, part of, uh, of anything involving the word crate is, uh, a very, uh, slow, suffocating death, uh, uh, because of the, uh, pre- and post-synaptic neurotoxins working in concert to permanently uh, destroy your uh, central nervous system. So uh, we don't uh, we don't take any chances with Mrs. Crate, do we, huh? Although uh, crates during the daytime are very docile, um, and I've seen the handlers at the uh, Thai Reptile Park in Bangkok, uh, you know, pick them up like they were corn snakes and stuff, and uh, they're very docile. But at nighttime. Uh, they become totally different. They become very aggressive and uh, most people that get bitten actually roll over on them in their sleep and uh, wake up gasping for breath once the venom takes hold. They don't even know they were bitten. Um, and unfortunately uh, by then it's probably uh, a bit on the late side but you know the Thai Red Cross makes uh, anti-venom for them. Uh, uh, so if you get anti-venin, uh, chances are that uh, uh, you, you could uh, survive the bite. Really? Hi, Miss Crate. Well, we're going to clean your cage too because you're a real mess. Uh, Miss Crate will probably go in a much larger cage soon because she can uh, really appreciate it. Uh, this is a Bungarus candidus. And they really like wet areas. They're found in rice paddies actually hunting other snakes. So she won't be so excited as Mrs. Mr. Gloides to get in the water. <laughs> well, I'll put it back exactly where she was. Okay, so Miss Craig is ready to go back in there. Relax, girly. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay.
Okay. Come on. She's a very shy snake. Oh, they are very shy snakes. They're very, very, uh, like I said, during the day, that they're very docile. And the reason why they're docile is they're really bl quite blind during the day because their pupils are fixed and dilated uh, because they're night hunters. <laughs> and the funny thing is, they make when they bite humans, they make their pupils fixed and dilated too. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, but uh, sh she should probably like that because you know she can burrow in this substrate and crates like to burrow a bit, uh, so she should be okay. Uh, moving on, uh, we're gonna do uh, the male Guyanan Bothrops uh, Atrox. Pogo stick with venom, aka is the other term for it. Um, I put him in with uh, with Pogo over across the way. I don't have a real name for him yet. Um, uh, so uh, he could have potentially bred with her. I think he's too young, uh, but it was worth a try because uh, uh, Pogo has dropped unfertilized over for the past few years so I figured eh, what the heck now the, the interesting conversation I had with Jim Harrison who you know is very knowledgeable on, on this species um, uh, I said has he ever you know uh, tried to put a, a smaller male in with a larger female and he goes uh, uh, you know our do they have any cannibalistic tendencies and stuff? He goes, usually the female will try to eat the larger male than the other way around. So <laughs> I said, well, okay, that's at least something positive. So I put her, put her, put him in there, and he hasn't been really feeding terribly great uh, since he's come back over here. So, um, you know, I, I told Mrs. Viper Keeper to go ahead and. Uh, and decontaminate that because Miss Crate was a wild caught snake and I don't want anything that she may have to get past to him and then she'll need to clean this container once he's out of it because I don't want anything that he might have picked up from Pogo who has had this sort of we call it the crudly sort of just a, a mucus buildup on the lips and stuff uh, he could be potentially carrying that, and I don't want him to pass it on to the uh, other uh, golden lance heads that I've got down there. Again, these are not the golden lance heads from Brazil, the, the from the Isla uh, Grande Marquena, or whatever the, the correct pronunciation of the island is, Snake Island. But uh, uh, these are a yellow phase of Bothrops atrox. Uh, um, genus and species is the same. Uh, uh, they used to be called Columbianus, uh, but uh, Wolfgang Worcester said that they're really, you know, for all intents and purposes, a Bothrops atrox. So we're going to put this little guy in here, and he's going to hit the water and probably go uh, ballistic. Prove me wrong. Yep. So go ahead and just sat there. Go ahead and soak and just sit there. So that just means that, you know, when we take them out, that it's going to be all the fun. And that's why I'm working with Bothrops. That's why I've got my extra long signature hook uh, by uh, uh, John Zagel at uh, Georgia Herb Supply uh, standing by just in case. So I'm going to clean this cage and we'll be back to see what fun it gives me uh, when I put it uh, uh, back in its cage. Time for Mr. Bothrops. Hi, <laughs> I'm in lunch position there, Mr. Viper Keeper. You want to have a? You want to start a war? Huh? Yeah, that's why. I, I like these. The fact that they lock. I don't like them because that happens. Hi. Hi. Are you at the least pissed off at me? Huh? Did I get your head wet? It's funny how all my tropical snakes hate water. Oh, you are drinking. Okay. We'll go a little closer, but not too much closer because normally if I like to, if I water snakes like this, I will hide my hand below 
that's why this thing has the hook top because I can hide my hand uh, behind something safe uh, because you just don't go up close with them like this with your fingertips around the bottle because they will certainly bite you and that finger will be uh, no longer part of you come probably a couple weeks down the road when the surgeons remove it and send it to uh, pathology to have a look. Um, so, uh, with any of the pit vipers, uh, we have to remember that they've got that extra, very, very excellent uh, sensory organ that true vipers don't have. and. Uh, they use it very well and to their advantage. So, now that you've uh, nicely uh, drunk, I will disturb you once again uh, and put you back in your cage. Hello. Here you go. Just when you think it's going to get horrifically exciting, it's it goes actually as smoothly as it can. It completely goes as smoothly as as it, it, entirely possible, but you never can tell, and uh, no use uh, taking uh, chances. Got you, you little stupid fly. <laughs> um, okay, have a seat, Mrs. Viper Keeper. I'll be right back. Now we're gonna go on to the uh, the golden phase or the. Uh, Colombian uh, sort of variety of uh, Bothrops Aatrox. Um, now these are true pogo sticks. I mean, look at her. She's ready for missile launch already. Um, these, uh, these have been very good feeders and uh, uh, they, uh, they don't really uh, ask questions. They bite first. Uh, actually, her cage is in good shape, therefore we're not going to fuss with her, with the exception of getting out this shed, and I'll use the hook as a guard, um, because we don't want... Any misunderstandings? Well, no, we want to be able to intercept the yes. launch if the missile is launched. Yes, uh, absolutely. Is it it's a defensive uh, weapon. Uh, I am I am pretty good at fencing with uh, snakes. Uh, I've only missed once. There you go. Just relax. Just relax. Isn't she beautiful? Uh, here, Mrs. Viper Keeper, uh, undo your hand and I'll do uh, uh, the golden phase of uh, Bothrops Aatrox. I get my fingers well behind Mr. Camera there. Look at that. Isn't that spectacular? That is a uh, gorgeous, gorgeous snake. Its venom is still as nasty as the others, but uh, uh, still quite beautiful. So. Uh, we'll hand this back to uh, Lori, and uh, what I'll do is I'll pour a little water. That is whatever that was had to go into the water dish. Of all the other square centimeters of places that it could have fallen, it falls into the water dish. Of course. Um, now, just in case you're thirsty, you're a tropical snake, therefore you must like water. So we, we will let you down. Oh, you are drinking. Okay. Now, see this? This is how the, the water bottle works. See how my, my hand is over the and down below the edge? Your eyes should never leave the, the pointy end of the snake while doing this. Uh, so you can get out of dodge. The worst thing, you just let go of the bottle and get your hand out of there and and just uh, just protect yourself. Uh, so this is how, you, you know, those peop people who ask me, you know, where to get these, uh, uh, the website is usplastics.com and you look up laboratory wash bottles, W-A-S-H. 
and you can buy your own pack of these uh, depending on the sophistication of the uh, the wash bottle you can you know buy them fairly inexpensively or you can uh, buy a more fancy one uh, but I don't sell them uh, but now you know where to get them but if you use them on venomous snakes uh, be very careful I don't advise it I'm pretty experienced and I, you know they've even given me a hard time uh, uh, all bets are off so you're on your own but uh, this is the way I use it uh, safely uh, to hide my heat signature. But you know, if Lori had a wide shot on me, my and you, and she can pipe up right now. My eyes have never left the, that the head of the snake during this entire conversation. Yep, indeed. Okay, she's still drinking, so you know how important it is, and I hi. hi I harp on this quite often that uh, having hydrated snakes is the single most important thing that you can do for your uh, animals. Uh, they just don't drink out of water dishes so well. She's got the water dish right there, but there she is drinking from the bottle. Um, it's only because, you know, she'll, you know, stand, it's, it's Al's theorem and, you know, it's unproven, but. Uh, if you think about this logically and environmentally or natural history wise uh, standing water can, can and probably does contain parasites in the in the wild so when it's raining rainwater coming down from the sky is essentially parasite free um, and evolutionary wise there may have been pressure uh, on the animals and basically the animals that didn't drink from puddles lived longer because they didn't get parasitized and those that drank from their scales lived longer to reproduce and then they therefore pass on that trait that we will only drink from our scales uh, a fresh rainwater and we will forego unless it's a dire circumstance uh, drinking from lakes, ponds, streams or you know any sort of other types of water. So. Uh, this is just a theory, but, you know, if you ask any, you know, herpetologist, uh, uh, this does make uh, quite a bit of sense and is uh, probably why so many snakes in the collection, uh, even snakes that have been born in captivity and have been in my collection for years, and the same thing with zoos, uh, most of them prefer, you know, to have them will drink when they're sprayed down and not necessarily go for water dishes. Um, I do have some snakes that will drink from water dishes like the black beast will, um, that moron will, <laughs> um, but you know a lot of the snakes uh, won't. You want some more girly? Huh? Yeah, she's having a good drink. She just shed as you know, I just pulled out the shedding so uh, if you want to get your snake sort of trained to drink from a squeeze bottle and you want to take the risk of taking a bite because that's exactly what I'm doing um, being as careful as I possibly can but still uh, you know uh, she could launch up and over there and be on my hand and if I am off by a fraction of the second and not paying attention uh, I could be on my way to the ER with a Bothrops bite which is Certainly one of the last snakes in the collection that I'd like to be bitten by. Um, but if you spray them down with a spray bottle, a gentle mist, that will sort of get them conditioned. They'll say like, oh, it's raining or it's misting. And then you can uh, approach them with a the bottle and generally get them to drink. Uh, you know, that's one of the, the tricks that I use. I'll always uh, give them a spray down first and... Uh, and that will usually uh, do the trick. So we've got uh, we've got the sibling over here, and we'll see what shape uh, his cage is in. Oh, your cage is in okay too. Uh, we just have some uh, some boop. You behave yourself. That we will extract uh, manually. Oops, sorry. Okay, we'll do that and we've got some poop 
over here. Now, if I really wanted to be super safe, I would have the Uplex or a cage shield here. And what I would do is I'd put the cage shield in, which is the cage shield is a piece of plexiglass with a handle on it. I'd put it across diagonally here, and that would prevent any strike from reaching my hand. Uh, so I could, you know, scoop this out or pick up the water dish safely and uh, and, and fill it. But um, doesn't seem to be uh, too interested in me. This is the male, and he would rather stay back there to himself. So we'll just overfill his water dish a little bit to give him some moisture. And then what we'll do is uh, uh, we will uh, get rid of this for the second. And we'll spray him down and see if we can get him drinking uh, as well as his... Oh, uh, whoops. Well, I'll have to go get that with a pair of forceps. Hey, Lori, why don't you go <laughs> grab that for me? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, oh yeah, uh, a true tropical snake. It's like no, no. It's the dihydrogen oxide. Ah! Look at that hiding in smoke. <laughs> no, please. Not the water. <laughs> this is my. Uh, this is Viper Keeper's uh, method of waterboarding snakes. Now tell me your secret. <laughs> hey, bud. Come on, you're okay. You're okay. Come on. Come on, get your snout out. Oh, you're such a shy guy. Uh, here, here. There you go. Have a drink. I don't want to get in your nose. There you go. That's a good guy. That's a good guy. This, of course, is also a very uncomfortable position for somebody who's had back surgery. And when you've got a flag flying up your nose and can't take your eye off the snake. This is extremely uh, difficult to do. Is that good, huh? See, you, you just need some water and I'll bring food probably tomorrow. To, you know, being the day before the 4th of July, uh, this is a nice extra day that Mrs. Viper Keeper and I have had to uh, get things done. Um, and uh, we spent the earlier part of the day procuring uh, some additional components for Elvis's cage. Um, the plywood bottom, the two by fours to reinforce the bottom, and uh, the wheels to put on it so we can move it around easily. Um, and I've got a, a friend, David Spicer, in Dallas, Texas, who owns a big reptile uh, shop there. He's, he was nice enough to procure a, about a five foot, five foot tall, um, sandblasted, beautiful um, uh, grapewood tree limb, or, uh, so I can put that in Elvis's cage to climb in. Um, and he's going to be sending that up. So uh, I'm going to be starting construction on the bottom part of the cage uh, uh, maybe uh, this weekend. It depends on how my back feels. So I'm uh, hoping to make some progress and stuff. And this guy is good for now.